All right, so let's hit uh, memcache and then we'll hit bcrypt. And uh, actually, I think let's do bcrypt first and then we'll do memcache. So if you're storing passwords, there's a little readme. This is where you can learn about bcrypt right there. And if you're storing passwords, you want to encrypt those passwords. And you can find this code at GitHub, Ghost11, Golang Training. And uh, yeah, so man, if you're storing passwords, you want to encrypt them. And so this encrypts your passwords and unencrypts them. So there's a package at this place, golang.org x crypto bcrypt. So if I wanted to see that, I'd just take this URL and I would bring it over to Godoc. and forward slash, I put all that in, right? And so there's the bcrypt package. How would I have found this if I didn't know about that, right? I could have searched, you know, golang password encryption, you know, and see what, oh, look at that, bcrypt, go doc. I don't know if that's only for me, but that was like one of the main things that came up, right? And you have to remember that the, anything that's at this area, the X, is stuff that's used, is written by Google, employees it's used internally at Google and uh, and they they it might be making its way towards the standard library or this is just some cool go code that they wrote to help them do something and they're making it available and it'll never make its way to the standard library but bcrypt implements something uh, you know and then it allows you to basically encrypt and decrypt passwords and so here's the different stuff constants variables compare hash and password cost generate from password Hash version 2, new error, invalid cost. I don't know what all those do, but we'll see uh, how to use it here. So here's how we use it. So most people have as a password, like something like my wife's name and birthday. So I figured I'd just make that my password. I think that's actually a really funny password. Instead of actually using your wife's name and birthday, just to have your password be my wife's name and birthday. And so I'm going to, so that's just a string. And then I use, from the package bcrypt, I use this function uh, generate from password and I take that string and I turn it into a slice of bytes and then I also passed in some minimum cost so that cost is has how how hard is it to run this encryption and as computers become more powerful you could increase that cost just by changing that and that way it becomes harder for somebody to brute force break your password right because it's encrypted so they could run you know and so basically this is going to take this right here and run it through some sort of a hash algorithm. And the, the and how many times, and it'll, it'll get back a hash. And then, and then if I set this to like the number four, and then I'll take the result and run it through a hash algorithm. And then it'll take the result and run it through a hash algorithm. And then it'll take that result and run it through a hash algorithm. So I basically hashed to hash to hash to hash to hashed, right, four times. But I could crank that up if it's starting to become, you know, um, if it's if computers are becoming more powerful. And so basically all I'm doing is encrypting the password. And that you can see the constant I use there, min cost, is just an int and it's equal to four. Right? And I could crank the cost all the way up to 31. And the default cost is 10. And so uh, so that will give me back when I run generate from password it gives me back a slice of byte and an error. So it takes slice of byte and the cost gives me back a slice of byte and an error. And so when I run this, control C, Uh, there's the slice of byte that I get back. So I just printed that byte slice right here. And it gives me all this right here. And then I could turn that into a string and it gives me all this. And then I turned it into hexadecimal with print F and said make it hexadecimal. And uh, that's this one. It's kind of hard to see which one. Let's comment that one out and rerun it. So there's the hexadecimal. And I could use compare hash and password. 
and I could give it the original, I could give it a, so what's compare hash and password want? Compare hash and password wants the hash password and then the password is a slice of byte. And they're both slice of bytes. So here's the hash password, and it's that slice of bytes. So that's the encrypted stuff. And then here is the original password. Are those going to match? Is that going to return? Because compare hash passwords returns uh, an error. And it returns an error, returns nil on success or an error on failure. So uh, if error is not nil, it doesn't match, right? Otherwise, it does match. So is that going to match? Is it going to return match or doesn't match? What's this program going to return? Match or doesn't match? How many people, raise your hand, say it's going to return doesn't match? How many people, raise your hand, say it's going to return match? Let me help you out. Do those match? <laughs> That's going to be doesn't match. And we can see that right here. Doesn't match. All right, those don't match. Well, what if Well, I don't need to put that there. I could just do this. Match. Right, so I got the encrypted version right here, and then I got the unencrypted version. And I compared them, and it says, hey, it matched. How would this work in the real world? Where would this P be coming from? Like, first time they, they sign up, they enter their, what they wanted as password. We encrypt it, right, and we get back a byte slice, and we store that in our database, right? And then the next time they come back, they log in, they give us their password for login, so we grab this, we get the byte slice from the database, which is stored as their password, and then we take what they just gave us in the form as their password, put it right here, run this, and see if they compare. And if they match, you're in. And if they don't, I'm sorry, your password doesn't match. And we are not storing their password on our server. Are you providing the hash uh, that it's working from? Gotta use the same one every time, right? Yeah, I don't know what's going on under the covers with bcrypt. All I know is that it looks good, you know, and, and it's been referred to me by people who know so much more than me. Caleb, right? Okay, but you're not defining any particular hash that's that it's using. It somehow it does that over and over again with the same one? No, I'm not building up the hash. You're not building the hash. I'm not building the hash. All I'm doing is using generate from password from bcrypt. And then you could go look at bcrypt and say, how does bcrypt do what it does? And bcrypt uses, uh, you know, Provost and Mazier's bcrypt uh, adaptive hashing algorithm, whatever that is. I'm just, okay, I'm just thinking it's got to use a different hash for different situations. It's got to save the hash. Also. It's got to salt it. You're salt. thinking about salting it. So if my password is password, which a lot of people have, and your password is password, which a lot of people have, and we could go look in top, you know, uh, 100 passwords used, right? There's a list that's like, you know, here's a list of the top 100 Adobe passwords. Maybe somebody hacked this, right? Right? And so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is a really common password. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is another one. Password, Adobe123, QWERTY, 1234561111, Photoshop, right? I love you. Let, let, let mine? I'm not sure what that's let about. Me let me in. Oh, I was thinking it was German. I'm like, hmm, interesting. Chocolate. I won't read that one, but it has something to do with the pho restaurant. <laughs> uh, Nicole. Wow, Nicole's popular. You know, so we could take this, we could take this, like if we are hacking. Ginger. Ginger. That's a QWERTY. 
Where's Ginger? Right, right there. What's this one? That's one, and the, the QWERTY is uh, the three letters. What? One, oh, Q-W-E. Q-1, oh, 2, yeah. Snoopy 1. Killa. Really? That's one of the top 100? So here it looks like, you know, ciphertext, plain text, and count. We do not yet have the keys Adobe used to encrypt passwords, users affected by their most recent breach. However, thanks to Adobe choosing symmetric key encryption over hashing, selecting ECB, whatever, all this. So maybe they're just saying, this shows up, 191,000. This shows up this many times at Adobe, right? And this is the most popular password. So this one must be this one. Right? Or if, if we're not salting passwords when they go in, then, then uh, if we're a hacker and we have access, we could then sign up and, and know the account that we use that password with, and it creates a hash, and everybody who has that password is going to have the same hash. And so the salt will take the password that you gave, this password, and then just add something random to it, and then, and then encrypt it. And so every time 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 gets encrypted, it has a different salt added to it, and so it gets a different hash, right? And then there'll never be any match between people having the same password. They will always have different in encryption, which is stored. And so that salt also gets remembered and stored with the user or uh, with that password. And so the, you know, this algorithm here undoubtedly salts and, uh, and, and stores that salt somehow so that if I put in Todd twice, it's going to give me different stuff. And so let's just let's just experiment with that, okay? And so here's the first time is is just Todd, okay? And uh, I kind of want a new file, so I'm going to do a new O1 and drop all that in there, and then we'll experiment. I'll make this one O2, and um, we don't need the readme in that one. We'll come here and uh, and we'll just do Todd and bcrypt and byte slice and then print the byte slice and we can print the hexadecimal and then we'll uh, we'll do Yeah, ends on 75, ends on 121, ends with E79, ends with 34B. And we encrypted the exact same thing. And I think maybe it'll be more clear just to look at the, you know, limit out some of this stuff. And they uh, follow the beginnings pretty similar, but so anyhow, right? Two people have the same password. Good luck. Every password that we have in our database is going to be some crazy, unique, massive string. That's cool. I really like that. <laughs> uh, I think I'll get rid of the byte slice on that one and get rid of printing that one. And uh, I don't know if we want to unencrypt them just for fun. But I think that shows what we wanted to show. That's enough. 
Any other questions about Bcrypt? How many people think Bcrypt is awesome? Bcrypt is awesome. Bcrypt is awesome, man. Just like so simple, right? Like just generate Bcrypt my stuff and then bam and then unencrypt it. You can do that with passwords or whatever. Uh, I don't know anything about security. I will mention this one last thing. This is totally on my horizon. Where's the stuff I want to do? Watch list. There we go. So I want to do these courses. Stanford Cryptography. And uh, then this, these algorithm courses right here. Part 1, Part 2. Those look awesome. But I missed that one. And this one, who knows when. I got so much on my plate right now. So that'll be maybe this summer or something. Be crypt.